All right, welcome back, everybody. And it is an absolutely, absolutely stunning day out there. We're going to have a little bit of fun. And because these are very much impromptu type videos, you just never quite know what's going to happen. Anyway, with that, we got to get one super important thing out of the way. Yes, happy Easter, everybody. Tomorrow is, uh, is that day where people tend to eat a few too many peeps few too many hard-boiled eggs, but we have an absolutely fabulous time, and that's really what it, uh, it is about, other than the, the religious side of things, which is also equally important. Uh, the however is uh, family getting together and having a great time, especially with our absolutely amazing, amazing weekend. So with that, make sure you do get out. We're going to keep this one super short, and well, let's get to show on the road. So when we talk about what the heck are you saying, George, that the buyers are just absolutely chewing it up. It's a feeding fresh, feeding frenzy of piranhas. There we go. And everybody can see that mental image. They've all, <laughs> they've all seen the, you know, uh, National Geographic or whatever, you know, the critter gets in the water and it's like turmoil and all of a sudden the critter has gone in seconds, right? Well, at least a minute. Nonetheless, that is what is happening with our buyers, even though mortgage rates really are not being that friendly. Yeah, they've been going up. Yeah, they've been coming back down in little pieces. And yeah, the feds, well, you know, they still said we're going to reduce rates three times this year, but we got to wait for inflation to do something a little bit different. Well, when we talk about Mr. Yoon, let's blow up Mr. Yoon in a uh, positive sense here. He says, while modest sales growth might not stir excitement, it shows slow and steady progress from the lows of late last year. And that is something that is important because we are seeing that growth. Now, you might be saying, George, how is that possible? How can we possibly be, be seeing growth? Well, funny enough, our seven-day running average, except for yesterday, because Friday's a big list day, we have actually been seeing about 750 homes on average coming on. Uh, however, we've been seeing nearly 1,400 coming off. So it's an almost for every home that's coming on market, two are going off market. But let's take a look at Friday because, well, it's our consistent metric. So when you pop this open, you can see new listings were at 916, but are pended at 1,408. And solds are at 900, 402. Well, when you look at that, even today, you can see we are pulling our inventory down. In fact, as we get to the, the metrics of, you know, what's going on in Northwest MLS on a residential side, you're going to see that we're at inventory wise, we're half. We should be at 12, 15,000 homes. As we get closer to May, we should be at like 18,000 homes. And I don't see us getting anywhere near there. But this is super important, okay? Our, what we would consider our absorption rate is actually pretty close, meaning that for the number of buyers that are out there and the number of homes, we're pretty close. Now, yes, we are seeing that aggressive buyer activity, okay, which is awesome. And it is seasonally expected. But it's not like 2020 where we had a lot more inventory and then we've been dropping it down. We've had low inventory and we've been bobbling along. If we get rates down into the closer to the 6% range, uh, we are going to bring a buttload. And that is a lot, by the way, for those of those who don't know a buttload, that is a, a, a metric term, buttload. Anyway, I'm just too easy. Anyway, a buttload of buyers will come out and enter into the market and it will be even crazier. Now you might say, okay, does that mean we're going to see a market crash? And there's some people out there saying, hey, we're going to see a real estate market crash. Uh, no, okay, well, some of the bigger head sheds out there are starting to side with us that no, that's not happening. Not that we're a big head shed. I have a little head. But anyway, <laughs> with that being said, understand even Chase, who thinks that a worst case scenario will only see an 8%, meaning if we saw an extreme bad market, uh, we would see about an 8% downward trend in home prices. On a bullish, you know, where we're going after it, they say we're going to see about 4%. I agree. I think we're going to see 4 or 5% this year, albeit well-priced homes are going off market in seven days. 
and they're seeing escalations, they're seeing multiple offers. Now, escalations aren't the insanity that they were in 2020 through uh, 2021. However, we are seeing that, but they're a lot more hmm, palatable in many different ways, a lot more realistic. All right, let's move on. We can get on with the show here. So when we take a look at uh, what's going to happen and we take a look at Freddie Mac with rate, this is their running seven-day average. And as you can see, it's been coming down and it's kind of got that little bit of a lag to it, okay, because they're taking the average. And so, you know, the rates are doing this every day. The lag is that they kind of do this. And so, this rate actually should be just a tad bit lower because we had some really good pricing on Friday. Uh, for those of you that were closing month end, eh, you didn't get to capture that one. You got the, <laughs> the higher rate, but those about to close, make sure that you call your lender uh, because rates actually performed really well. We did see a nice little drop in rates, especially with some of the jumbos that are out there. All right, let's move on. When we take a look at the news, the news itself, as far as headlines, little change in mortgage application volume despite lower rates, which I 100% agree, uh, because new applications is what they're talking about. Uh, when we take a look at the uh, the one on the right there, the 30-year fixed rate, they showed at 6.91. That is the trading that we are looking at, not necessarily what lenders are offering, because there's a lot of different uh, pricing that is out there. Uh, the key thing to understand about when we when we talk about some of the metrics, a lot of folks just don't realize that the feds have no control over mortgage rates. Those are publicly traded. Those are mortgage-backed securities. And that is publicly traded. And that's like with the stock market and why, you know, earnings reports and CPI and PBO, those all come into play because the investors look at it and say, safe, not safe, safe, not safe. And that affects rate. Now, the feds can affect rate, but they don't control it. Remember, the feds only do commercial, what banks lend to on a daily basis, your credit card interest rate. If you have a home equity line of credit that is not fixed or what's called a HELOC, that is what they control. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on. Let's talk a little bit about the Northwest MLS. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on. And this is, an, again, one of the metrics that we monitor. And the, the lines that we're looking at are the average active price. And we look at those year over year in the same month last year. And as you can see, we're about 2% down when we talk about the price of a active listing of year to date, 2023 versus 2024. We're down two and a half percent, or it was a million forty-five last year. It's a million twenty-four this year. However, when you take a look at the sold, that's where the tire hits the pavement. That's the most important one. The same month, and again, you know, we're taking a look at you know up to March 29th, uh, on the same month of March, you know, we're up 13 percent. So last year we were at 755,000, we're at 853,000 for the same month, year over year we're up yet again. In fact, we're $11,000 higher than we were at this time last year when we consider uh, year-to-date numbers, or approximately 10.1%. The reason that that's so important is that it helps you understand trend, because what it's saying is, and seasonally so, and limited inventory so, and a lot of buyers so, we're seeing that the sold price is continuing up the active list price has been, eh, it is waning just a tad bit. Not uncommon, hmm? but the important one, the solds are still heading in a positive direction. That's residential only through three quarters of Washington state. If we take a look at Pierce, Kane, Snohomish County alone, the three core areas that we focus on, uh, those numbers are even better. Well, better in the sense that showing a positive direction. All right, let's move on. When we take a look at the actual overall Northwest MLS and we talk about inventory, you can see our top line there, we're down about 0.8% or about 6,800 homes. And that is a low number. We should be between 12 and 15,000 different homes available. So we're struggling with this one right now, but look at the pendant. That's super amazing. Right now we're, we're up 
pended year to date, we're up 2.5% or a few hundred homes, okay? We're only 170 off from having the same number of sales year over year. And that is still, again, a pretty amazing number. For the month of March alone, we were at 15.3%. And month over month, you know, from February of 2024 to uh, March of 2024, uh, you know, we are absolutely seeing positive numbers all the way through. Again, seasonally normal. So don't think that you're like, oh my gosh, I missed the boat. Nah, not at all. It's seasonally normal. And we will start to see some of these numbers taper off with the vacation trifecta. When we hit mid-May, real estate uh, comes <laughs> almost to a screeching stop. Why? Well, we've got Memorial Weekend. I think I got that one right. Memorial Weekend. And then after that, we have kids getting out of school. And for those of you who say, I don't have kids. <laughs> well, that's fine. People are seeing summer. They're seeing vacations. They're taking they're preparing, they are, their mind is going elsewhere. And that happens till about July 4th, okay, which is our second holiday. So we stack them pretty doggone tight in there. What happens then between July, after the July 4th weekend until about the middle of end of August, okay, we see a we see a buying surge. Why? We want to secure schools, we want to secure a home, uh, it's time to go out and look. But then why does it stop? You betcha. We have our other vacation. We have Labor Day weekend. I think I'm getting those right. Uh, sometimes you get Memorial Day and Labor Day backwards. If I did, I'm sorry. But anyway, we have another three-day holiday. Plus, then we have kids getting back in school. And you might say, oh, I don't have kids again, George. I'm saying, don't worry about it because you're planning a vacation. And you're going to go out and your mindset is elsewhere. And until about the end of September, whoop, we pick back up again until late December. So, we call that the vacation trifecta or the real estate ghost town. And that is something for you to keep in mind if you're looking for a value because a lot of buyers are out doing the sunny thing. Well, like many of us. All right, moving on. Let's get, uh, let's get our next uh, slide up here. Hang on a second. So when we go over and we actually take a look at new construction, new construction is doing very well. Now, there is some national news uh, from... Uh, some folks out there that are claiming that, uh, you know, it's Armageddon and new construction. Uh, there are some areas that they're having some some tough times, and I don't argue that. The However, is I'm only dealing with our Puget Sound area, Washington State here. And as you can see, our numbers are doing incredibly well. In fact, you know, we're up 4.2% in number of pended homes in March alone. Yep, we're a few hundred homes or 100 homes less than what we were last year at this time for the same month of March. But when we take a look at it year over year, we are still doing amazingly well. Incentives are starting to fall off a little bit. And that is completely normal, especially as rates start to come back down. Uh, they're maintaining, maintaining uh, plat integrity and whatnot, which is super cool because then it protects all of the other homeowners in a community, which yeah, that's just good, good sense. All right, moving on. Let's talk about... Uh, our uh, REO side of things, and uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this number. This is pretty interesting. So, first of all, uh, there's not 64 homes available. It's uh, actually 60, and there are not 112 uh, new on market. It's actually 104. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have the wall of shame, and no, I do not post those people. And even though I've been asked, no, I will not. That's inappropriate. I will let you know that some of these numbers actually are better than what we're seeing here. But here's the important thing to understand. The lower graph, when it talks about the average sold price, look at that. We're actually up 34.4%. So last year at this time, the average foreclosure sales price was 416,537 for a list price. We're selling at 559,000 and our average list price is 518,000. Now, let me say that again. Our average sales price is $559,000, almost $560,000. Our average list price is $518,000. Why is that important? Again, foreclosures in our area just are not great. Not, if you're waiting, oh, I'm going to get a foreclosure. You're wasting your time. There are other alternatives. There's better options because banks look at it as, look, uh, I can make money just like a, a traditional seller can. I'll do paint, carpet, and vinyl. Uh, I'm going to put lipstick on a pig. I'm going to get it out there. I'm going to get it sold. And they will 
get it sold because our inventory is lower and there's that, that hey, this fits because almost all of those homes uh, are a significantly lower price point, which there's a larger demographic of first time home buyers. Uh, if there's not the 10 day wait, you know, you have investors and you have other uh, buyers that, that can come in and play. It is what it is. So if you're looking for something that is a good idea, hey, look at fixers, take a look at uh, uh, builders or sellers that lost their buyer back on market, uh, off market homes. There's a lot of different options to consider and that's a better option. Fixers, fixers are your better option if you're looking for a really good value. Just saying. All right, with that, again, absolutely stunning and beautiful day out there. Remember that uh, as we are here and uh, if you like what you hear, subscribe. Just let us know what you like. More importantly, just like the video. That's all we ask. Just let YouTube know that, hey, you like what we're saying. There's no selling here. And in fact, if you have questions, post them down below. So remember to smash the subscribe button. Have fun. Don't smash the rabbit tomorrow. And uh, in the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. Happy Easter. And I will see you on the next video. Take care.